continued from Magic Orientation Introduction. Right. I said I'll talk to you about the Mobile Task Force Sigma-3, the Bibliographers. The boring name is on purpose. Let me preface this. I'm not in Sigma-3. I only consult. I did induct a few of you myself a couple years ago, but I don't do that anymore. Yes, I see you, Agent Navarro, stop waving. As I was saying, since I'm not in Sigma-3, this will be the short version. Sigma-3 is a Foundation Task Force, which deals directly with the Anomalous community. On friendly terms, or at least as friendly as we can manage. If this sounds ridiculous to you, good. Means we haven't had any leaks. Originally, Sigma-3 was one of the task forces that took part in the failed invasion of the Wanderers Library three or four decades back. It was the only one left mostly intact. Afterwards, it was reformed and repurposed by order of O5 Command. They are not a paramilitary task force. Nor are they a containment team. They are the product of our superiors being very, very concerned about the idea that the Foundation might miss out on some important things. World-ending things. Simply because we are so isolated from the anomalous world. Even with the invasion of the library, if we had sources within the anomalous community, and if the task forces, or at least their leaders, and the people doing the planning for them, had been clear to know what we did already know about the library, then the operation could have gone significantly differently. As it was, the library incursion involved no people who had even heard of the library before the op began. It was too highly classified, and we didn't have any direct sources. People who'd been in there long enough to seriously know what it was like. We still don't even know what happened when we went into the library. The memories of everyone who went in were different. Even our existing recordings, actual audiovisual footage, directly contradict each other. Some of the survivors don't remember even going in at all. What we know for certain is that even now, there are still Foundation members left behind in the library, imprisoned beyond our reach, beyond any reach, and that this was completely preventable. But I'll get back to the library. We have always had some sources in the anomalous community. We have a long history of cooperating with the Global Occult Coalition, which is far more part of the anomalous world than we are. We also created Mobile Task Force Tau-9, the bookworms, to deal with anomalies related to the library, the hand, and magic in a more traditional manner. But that could only take us so far. Command decided we needed ears on the ground. Originally, Sigma-3 did not make use of any direct anomalous means. In recent years, this has changed. There are people who are actual practicing magicians in this very room. Members of Sigma-3. People who are anarchists. People who do double duty for organizations like Marshall Carter and Dark, The Serpent's Hand, and other anomalous organizations. And they've had results. Sigma-3 has contained a high number of actively dangerous anomalies that could not have been secured without cooperation with more benign anomalous entities. There are at least three dozen SCP objects which Sigma-3 contained directly that I'm aware of, and more that Sigma-3 acquired at least some information for. I'm not allowed to name most of them tonight because not all of you are on Sigma-3, and clear to know that. But just from SCPs I worked on as project lead, Sigma-3 helped locate SCP-003, the first SCP object I was assigned to, through a remote viewing operation coordinated with outside sources of information from the Wondrous Library. Sigma-3 also discovered and acquired SCP-472 through contacts in the anomalous community. On a larger scale, Sigma-3 helped prevent a direct, coordinated assault against the Foundation about a decade ago, after Incident Zero. An assault that would have crushed us, and that's almost impossible given the Foundation's size and defenses. I can't tell you the exact number of times that Sigma-3 has literally saved the world, but I can tell you it's in the plural. In exchange, 
Sigma-3 is set apart from the other Foundation task forces. They do not aid in the containment of any anomalous entities, not even indirectly, unless it's done with the cooperation of members of the anomalous community. This is where many people stop and raise hell. This is worse to them than even task forces like Omega-7 or Alpha-9. Those task forces use or used anomalous entities. But this task force actively shields certain anomalous entities from containment. Worse, sometimes Sigma-3 even makes deals which allow anomalous entities to go free. This goes against the fundamental ethos of the Foundation, they say. And maybe they're not wrong. But as things stand now, the Foundation is not capable of simply containing every anomaly out there in the wild. Until that time, Sigma-3 has proven its worth. What good is our ethos if we don't have a world to protect? Let me get colloquial again. Sigma-3 are the people whose job it is to know if some cultists are summoning Cthulhu. Generally, their friends and neighbors don't want the world to end. But maybe they can't really do much to stop it. But we can. They have the knowledge. We have the resources. They may not know where jailers are uh, members of the Foundation, but when Cthulhu's involved, they don't mind telling someone who knows someone who knows someone else who can call in one of our bigger mobile task forces and bust some heads and save the world. Not that I'm saying Cthulhu really exists. If it does, then you're not clear to know about it. Just an example. I think we're due another break. Come back in 20 and we'll talk about the, uh, so-called anomalous community. Continued in magic orientation, the community. End of file. To learn more about the SCP Foundation, subscribe to SCP Orientation today and turn the notification bell on so you don't miss any of our videos.